Thank you, Under Secretary Weinstein. Um, the, uh, I, th I thank you for your testimony, again, for your service. Uh, the members of our subcommittee may have uh, some additional questions, and um, we will uh, we'll ask our, we'll basically go uh, side by side and ask initial questions. If we have additional questions, then we'll submit those um, in writing uh, to you. Um, I now recognize myself for uh, opening questions. Um, I'll start with the southern border, and as we've talked about a couple of times, the, the fact that we've had from fiscal year, from the beginning of fiscal year 2021 through present day, uh, over 360 individuals who've entered this country that in some way, shape, or form match, match the, the terror watch list. Um, what I want to start by asking is, what is INA doing and how is that being reorganized to better know those individuals and, and whether or not we're detaining them? And I think the recent arrest of or detainment uh, of eight Tajik nationals who had ties to ISIS, as reported by DHS, highlights and frames this particular question. Can you walk us through what INA is doing in this situation? No, thank you, sir. And uh, as we discussed, and by the way, thank you for the phone call the other day. Um, that was a very fruitful discussion. But as we discussed, that is a major focus of obviously DHS and INA, that being the border and who's coming across the border. We have at DHS a very strong uh, screening and vetting capability. And the whole intent of that is to identify people who might be a threat to the United States and prevent them from getting in here, either getting a visa, coming across the border, or if they're here and we learn about that derogatory information, uh, which we're constantly trying to develop, whether they're here or not, um, that we pick them up and we uh, neutralize that threat. INA plays a very important role in that effort. We obviously are generating intelligence on a regular basis, looking for threats and threat actors. We also are centrally involved in the, the screening and vetting operation. We actually do a lot of the support for the National Vetting Center that is the sort of the intermediary that makes sure that the information from our national security elements relating to people who might be encountered on the border gets into the vetting process and we provide a lot of the technical support as well as the training for that. We also do a number of other things that are very focused on the border, such as um, we're involved in providing nominations to the TOC, the Transnational Organized Crime Watch List. As you know, there is a watch list for, for TOC, as there was, uh, as, as we've had for 20 some years for terrorism. We nominate, based on information we get from our state and local partners, um, individuals for that watch list based on our intelligence work. That's another area. And then, you know, as we said, in terms of proactive intelligence collection, we are focusing our interview efforts on the border against the threat of people coming how across did, that border. How did the department, on this particular issue, because these folks, as reported, came in, eight Tajik nationals came in in, in January. Um, so I, I think it leads everyone to believe that probably 362 is at the very low end of the number. Uh, if there were eight people who'd been in the country for, call it, five to six months, and then we found them. How did the department miss that? Um, and then how did the department catch that? And what are we doing to make sure that that never happens again? Well, as, as I think you know, colleagues of ours from DHS are gonna be giving you a classified briefing, I believe right after the recess. Um, and most of this is very sensitive and, and classified. So I'm very limited to what I can say on the record. Um, but I think it is clear that um, when those individuals came across the border and were encountered, there was no derogatory information that came to the attention of the people on the border at that time. The derogatory information came to light later on. I can say without getting into the specifics of the work done after they got here, uh, that I think you've heard from the FBI and others, there was unprecedented cooperation between DHS and the FBI in working the situation. Beyond that, I think I, I'd, be, I'd have to defer to the, my colleagues who will give a classified briefing on this. Um, but it has been a um, it's been a joint effort between us and our law enforcement friends at the FBI. When Director Ray sat here and testified in front of our uh, committee last, uh, he talked about the threat level being exceedingly high, um, and used some specific words to de to describe that he doesn't believe that it's ever been higher. 
Um, do, you, do you think that we are in a period, do you agree with that statement that he says? And then is there a black swan event? Is there some sort of event that, that keeps you up at night that INA is focused on trying to communicate, cooperate, and help between state, local, tribal, federal, all the different levels? Well, let me, let me start with this, the latter part of your question. INA is very much involved in the terrorism fight, and we are focused on the whole range of terrorism threats that we face. And then to the first part of your question, is this a time of unique threat? You know, every time that you, when you look at it, you think it's like a unique level of threat. But we are at a very fraught time, especially after October 7th, because October 7th sort of energized so many threat vectors from so many different places and bad actors, and you, is mobilizing potential terrorists from a variety of different perspectives. That, in addition to what was already a standing threat of terrorism, both traditional foreign terrorism threats, but also domestic violent extremism that we've seen. So the overlay of the sort of sustained, raised threat from October 7th, on top of what, as we said in our threat assessment last year, was already a heightened threat does make this a particularly precarious time in our, our nation's history. Thank you. My initial time has uh, expired. I now recognize the ranking member for his round of questions.